Hello boys and girls, welcome to our next episode on how to play your violin. Today we're going to actually get to pluck a little bit on our violins. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I hope you've watched the first and second episode teaching you how to properly handle your instruments, how to take it out uh, without breaking it. And also during the second episode we also went over parts of our instrument which will come in handy today. So once you take your violin out of your case, try holding it underneath your right arm. This is called the rest position. So this is my right arm over here. So what you're going to do is put the violin underneath your right arm and then just let go of your arm. Just by using the weight of your arm, you should be able to hold your violin comfortably. Please make sure that your hand, your arm, is not going over where the bridge is. Because if you press too hard on the bridge, it will pop out and then you will no longer be able to use your instrument. So please make sure you put your arm over the chin rest and the tail piece. Just like that. And it's that easy. All right, the next part in setting up your instrument involves a rubber band. So I have a rubber band over here. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the rubber band into the C-bout. Remember, this is the C-bout. But make sure, since we have two C-bouts, make sure you put it over the C-bout that has the chin rest on it. So not on this side, because there is no chin rest on this side. So you're gonna loop that over and then go past the end button right here. Now, in some of your cases, it will come with a piece of sponge. I don't have one, so I'm gonna pretend that this is the sponge in your case. And now you're going to go ahead and lift up that rubber band and put the sponge underneath. What this will do is help pad your shoulder when we put it on your shoulder because the violin is made of wood it's hard so in the beginning it's going to hurt your collarbone a little bit but if we put a padding on it it feels more comfortable so now here we go we're going to go ahead and flip it over we're going to go ahead and put it underneath our arms and there are a few positions before we get to our playing position which is where your violin is sitting on your shoulder and so this is, once again, this is called the resting position because we're resting, we're not really playing anything. Or sometimes we're, we're in rest position when we need to flip our books. That way we can flip our books. So now we're going to go ahead and take our left hand, put it underneath this area. This area, if you remember from episode two, is called the upper bout so you're going to go ahead and grab the upper bout so not on this side not on the top but on the bottom so you're going to go ahead and grab the upper bout you'll want to open your arm a little bit and take your violin out if you do not open your arm and you try to pull the sponge might actually fall out so you want to open your arm bring it out straight in front of you this is called position one or sometimes in class I will just say one and then you go ahead and turn it around this is called position two sometimes in class I will just say two now notice I'm doing all of this with just the left arm the right arm is not helping out at all so rest position one two and finally the playing position. The playing position is where the sponge is touching your collarbone and your shoulder right here. And you go ahead and turn your head a little bit towards the violin. Just a little bit, not too much. This is too much. Just a little bit. And then you tilt your head. You pretend your violin is your very comfortable pillow that you sleep with at night. You just go ahead and uh, Put the weight of your head onto the violin. Now if you're doing it properly, you should be able to hold the violin with no hands. In the beginning, you won't get used to it, so you will feel like, oh my god, it's falling, but don't worry. Okay, so just use your head, head weight, 
and then you can hold the violin. Now, if you're sitting up properly, your violin should be straight. If you're slouching, if you're slouching on your chair, or maybe if you're slouching and you're leaning against the back of a wall or you're sitting on your bed, your violin might point down like this, okay? So you want to go ahead and find a chair when you practice and you want to sit on the edge of the chair sitting up straight and your violin will be straight, okay? Now, for my experienced players and some of you who's played before, you might spend extra money on a chin rest. Now this is about $30, so I don't expect you to go out and get it. And frankly, the sponge that we give you right now is very good for its purpose. But if you do get one, there's a little hook on these. You just go ahead and hook over the bottom on both sides and you slide it in. So this would take place of the sponge. So notice there is a little curved area here. That's where I'm going to put it on my shoulder like this. So that's it for me. All right, let's go ahead and move on. So I would recommend that you practice holding your violin when you are maybe watching TV or uh, you're on the computer watching YouTube. You can just hold it like this so that you would get used to it. And pretty soon this will feel very comfortable to you. Okay. Now let's go ahead and start playing a little bit today. Here we go. Go ahead and take your left hand for right now in the beginning. We're going to go ahead and have you use the left hand to help out. But remember, most of the weight is being held by the head and the shoulder and your neck like this with your head weight like this. So this is just to help out a little bit. So try to remember that. So that means when you're holding with your left hand, don't let go like this. Don't try to look at your violin like this. You'll have to get used to looking a little bit sideways. That way you can hold the violin. All right, let's get started. Here we go. We have four strings on our instrument right here. So this is string number one, two, three, and four. Let's see if you remember their names from our second episode. This is our E string. So E as an elephant. This is A string. A as an apple. This is our D string. D as in David. And finally, this is G string. G as girl. So here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to go ahead and take our right hand and we're going to go ahead and put away our pinky, our ring finger, and our middle finger because we're not going to use them now. So you have to get used to closing these three fingers. We're going to go ahead and leave the pointer and the thumb out because those are the two only two fingers right now we're going to use to pluck. So here we go. You're going to start by taking your thumb and placing it at the edge of the fingerboard. This is the fingerboard, this piece of blackboard right here. So you're going to put it at the edge of the fingerboard and then you take your pointer and you just pull on that string and then let go. Pull on the first string. So that's E. All right. So we're going to do a little exercise right now. We're going to go ahead and pluck four times on the E string. So we're going to pluck E, 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 and then we're going to relax. We're going to wait for four beats four beats of silence. So we're going to say one, two, three, four, and then we're going to plug on the E string four times, one, two, three, four, and then we're going to rest for four beats. So here we go. I'm going to give you a count off, so don't start yet. Ready? One, two, ready, go. E, 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 rest, two, three, four. E, 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 one, two, three, four. Very good. Let's go ahead and go to our string number two. 
That's our A string. We're going to do the exact same thing. Four beats on, four beats off, four beats on, four beats off. Here we go. One, two, ready, pluck. A, 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 A. One, two, three, four. A, 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 A. One, two, three, four. Now notice during the rests, I'm going to take my finger and put it on the string so it stops vibrating. So we would stop the sound like this. Did you hear how the sound stopped right away? So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and play the D string now. D as in David. That's the third string. String one, two, three, the third string. So we're going to play four times on D and four, uh, four times off or four beats off. So during those four beats, I want you to put your finger on the D string to stop it from vibrating. So here we go. Let's give you a different view. Ready? One, two, ready, go. D, 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 D. One, two, three, four. D, 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 D. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to learn another technique right now. It's called the pluck and stop. So what the pluck and stop means is, for example, I'm plucking on the D string. I'm going to stop my finger on the next string. That way I don't accidentally play two string like this. Oh, oops. I just played two strings. So you have to pluck and stop on the next string. This will take a little bit getting used to. But try it out. So it's D, 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 D. So I stop at the next string. All right. Let's go ahead and go to our last string right now. String number four. One, two, three, four, the G string. So we're going to pluck four beats, four steady beats. One, two, three, four. Steady beat means not fast, not slow, but the same speed always. So four times on G and four times off. Now remember, you have to use the pluck and stop method. And when we are resting for four beats, when you're not playing and you're just counting one, two, three, four, you have to take your finger and touch that G string so the G string stops vibrating. Let's try it out. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. G, 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 G. Rest, two, three, four. G, 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 G. One, two, three, four. Very good. See, it's very, very easy. All right, let's put everything together that we just learned right now. So here we go. We're going to go in reverse now. Let's go in reverse. We're going to play four beats, four steady beats on G string. Rest for four beats. Go to the D string, rest for four beats. Go to the A string, rest for four beats. And finally, four beats on E string, and then rest for four beats, and then we're done. So here we go. Let's get ready. Remember, thumb by the edge of the fingerboard. Sometimes your thumb might travel upwards. Don't forget, just pull it right back, and you're ready to go. All right, here we go. One, two. Ready, go. G, 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 G. Rest, two, three, four. D, 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 D. Rest, two, three, four. A, 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 A. Rest, two, three, four. E, 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 E. Rest, two, three, four. Not very hard at all, right? All right, let's go in reverse. So let's go ahead and start with E string, A string, D string, and we'll stop on G string. Here we go. Let's start with the E string. Let me give you a count off. One, two, ready, go. E, 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 rest, two, stop that sound. A, 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 A. Rest, two, three, four. 
D, 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 rest, two, three, four, G, 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 rest, two, three, four. And it's that easy and congratulations, you've just plucked and played on your instrument for the first time. So keep practicing, please remember in the beginning you will feel sore and tired, that is normal. The more you practice throughout the week, the more your body will get used to it and very soon you won't even feel it at all. All right, thank you for sharing time with me again and I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.